title uh, for Candy Bar. Frabalini hey Hardware and Garden Shores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1314. Especially if you were in the industry. <laughs> May 23rd, 2024. 89 degrees on this day in 2012. And 28 degrees on this day in 1963. Swimming season is upon us. I hope you've gotten a hold of Aquaside, a White Bear Lake company that makes products that will keep your swimming area free of weeds and gunk and algae. They've been helping people maintain Great Lake shores for more than 60 years. The products are easy to use. They work quickly, and they're registered mm. with the EPA and DNR. You don't have to let the weeds overtake uh, your pond or lake and ruin the summer. Call Aquaside today. They'll help you identify your weed problem and make sure your place looks great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Yep, sure. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner. Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hype in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. John in Arizona is proposing a new t shirt for us. No. Oh. Bring your ass to the Knack Hardware and Lounge. <laughs> and I, I say no. Uh, that's the Timberwolves saying. We're not going to have anything to do with it. It's not ours. We didn't come okay. up with it. It's their saying. I do like it, though. Yeah. I, and speaking of bring yass, they all looked like maybe they stayed out too late this week. They looked like yass. Yeah. Well, do you want me nice. to break it down? Yeah, or? do it. When you, when you spend a you know grueling seven-game <laughs> series against the defending champ, you know, you, you're you're going to come down a little bit from that. And the Mavericks had an extra day off. And then, of course, you know, with hydration and everything else, I think the Mavericks intentionally tried to run the Wolves out of the Where's gym. their big commie from? Is he Serbian, too? No, he is. Oh, where is he What's from? What's his name? Luka? You know, the, every team, he's one of these big white guys who's a commie. He's, you know, I don't like him because he pouts a lot. But Dancing boy, Bear. He's a good ball player. Yeah, he's now, very, people he's are Slovenian. figuring out. Slovenian. He's the Slovenian. same thing. Isn't that where uh, Melania Trump's from? Slovenia? What is she? Is she, she a commie? I think she is from Slo Slovenia. Uh, probably not. We should probably look that yeah, up. If I think it's Slovenia, sure. it probably isn't. <laughs> she is from Slovenia. If she's yeah. Slovenian American. I'll be damned. She is a Slovene. She's not hard on the eyes. I wonder who's taking care of her. Why do you keep I, uh, Well, that? because it's uh, she's a very attractive <laughs> Very attractive, and you know Don ain't got time. Do you He's think, on the stump. Do you think she still looks at Trudeau today the same way she did years ago? If she, I, I don't know. That would. He's a terribly uh, mysterious fellow. He's yeah. a he's a bad apple. Yeah. Say a lot of people are taking advantage of the fact that we're number one in Aguila. Mm. Excellent. Right. How so? Well, for example, Jeff Pedro writes occasionally. I get contacted as many people do. By people pretending to be mutual friends with someone I know on social media. I have finally discovered a way to effectively end the conversation. Please see the attached screenshot. Uh, P.S. I'm looking forward to page three, today's scandal in the uh, daily edition of the GL newspaper. Uh, do we have a scandal today? I, uh, uh, I I have some in my news related good. to a previous scandal. That so counts. Think, yeah. So what Jeff is copying me on, he got a note from uh, Mary. I suppose I should leave her last name out of it, right? I Probably, mean, yes. A Facebook <laughs> post from somebody named Mary Blank and said, uh, a cryptocurrency trader, Forex trading expert, binary option trader. I don't know what any of that means. I don't do Facebook. And she writes, hello, Jeff. And uh, she's a perky looking gal. I'm sure it's all on the up and up. How are you doing, Jeff? And he, write back, he wrote back, okay. Wow, nice. It's nice meeting you here. I'm from Chicago. Where are you from? Anguilla. And that ended the conversation. Oh, wow. so he okay. just says, and get it? He used Anguilla. Yeah. And that yeah. probably that probably caused her to have some confusion. I would imagine so. If indeed it was a female. 
Well, what do you think that is? That picture is a female. Well, that's yeah, that's be, the, yeah. Does this happen? If it says uh, cryptocurrency. I'm not trusting them, and I see cryptocurrency over here. Yeah. Does, this, are, does this happen routinely on Facebook, where you'll open it up one day and someone is attempting to have you uh, join their club yes, or whatever? All the time. Well, what happens also is there are answers. Say I post something, and Joe Schmo posts something underneath. Then a female will say, "Oh, hi, Joe. I'm so happy to see you here." And Joe won't reply, but then maybe uh, Matt will reply, and the same woman will say, "Oh, hi, Matt." I'm, and it just continues on. I, I can't imagine leading life that way. I, I, I really can't. I'm serious. I just don't understand the well, appeal, especially the elderly. They might engage in a conversation <laughs> and then say, "I, I need two hundred dollars to do whatever," and people fall for that. Or, I know your grandson. I, he's he's in trouble and he's in jail, and I'm calling for him. And it's it's very predatory in that regard that Matthew is describing. Yes. And in fact, in some cases, I've known the elderly to search or search out in the vast, ever-expanding world for someone they may have met 20, 30 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to remember Teresa. I, again, I can't imagine leading my life that no, way. No, it's, it's, Facebook has become extremely problematic. Well, the concept of, uh, is, it, is it driven by loneliness? 100%. Really? What? Re responding? Yeah. Interaction. Don't you think, John? Uh, I I don't know. I use Facebook for music and then old schoolmates to connect with. That's that's really all I use it for. A number of emails, emailers, uh, GLers, have alerted me to a story out of Chicago. Uh, it, it doesn't surprise me. It, we should live in a world where this does surprise us. It won't. Illinois legislators have passed legislation that would change the word offender. You, would, you wouldn't use the word offender. Okay. Oh, boy. And you would be replaced with justice-impacted individual. Justice-impacted individual. I don't know. Uh, in a move, Republicans say disrespects victims of violent crime. It's House Bill 4409, which passed both houses... Uh, I believe Tuesday, it would also add Illinois Department of Corrections representation uh, to the adult redeploy Illinois uh, oversight board. But it also changes the words offender to justice impacted individuals. Well, words mean something, and I'll, I'll break that down for you in a moment. The name change, apparently, according to Republicans, could cost taxpayers thousands of dollars. Uh, the program aims to reduce crime and recidivism recidivism at, at a lower cost to taxpayers through community services as an alternative to prison. Proponents say the ARI, that's the Adult Redeploy Illinois concept, uh, is successful in reducing crime and, it, and that it has eligibility requirements. Specifically, individuals in the program have to be first-time offenders. Senator Terry Bryant, Republican from Murfreesboro, urged lawmakers to vote no. Over and over again, we keep changing the name of how we are re referring to those who have entered into criminal activity. And each time we make that change, each agency has to make that change in every one of their documents. So far, it seems that the only thing bothering the Republicans Illinois, in Illinois is what this would cost. What, what, what should equally bother them is that it's deceptive and meaningless. Right now in the Department of Corrections, there's multiple changes that have been made, and it's costing thousands of dollars to do a name change. Okay. Senator Robert Peters, Democrat, Chicago, Encourage members not to get hung up on the name change, name change because the program oversight board could use more representation. I don't know what that means. What? Republicans said the focus shouldn't be on what they called the poor offender, but rather on victims of violent crimes. State Senator Steve McClure, Republican Springfield, brought up how the Prisoner Review Board released Crosetti Brand, the man who killed 11-year-old Jaden Perkins a day after his release. 
He said Brand wasn't a justice-impacted individual, uh, but rather an offender. Well, I wouldn't even call him an offender. I'd call him a murderer. Right. Well, There seems to be this rush to take away all accountability for people who commit crimes. Yes, because we've elected a political class in this country that views this country and this country's culture through the lens of oppressor and oppressed. So there's no way in hell a criminal could... The, the mystery would let every criminal off the hook because they're oppressed by the mere fact that they broke the law. That's where we are. Now, I would like to believe this is not true, what I'm reading. Well, in fact, rookie, do some verification. Let's go. Illinois House Bill 4409. Just look it up. There seems to be a rush to take away all accountability. See, I'm still, I'm still believing. I, my heart still wants to believe that this can't be happening. That we're no longer going to call them. Uh, you want to cling to the whole. I want to cling to the idea that we're not completely insane. But we're. I don't want to call you. I don't want to call a criminal a justice impacted individual. Nor will you. <laughs> what that suggests, because words mean something, is that somehow justice has impacted the fellow poorly. It's not his fault. Justice can't impact you poorly or unpoorly. It's justice. The word justice and impacted has no has no meaning. Right. It just is. How long will this take you, do you think? Well, it's a long bill. I'm looking for, I've got the bill up here. It creates the housing is recovery. It's like Minnesota. Program. Maybe it's one of those bills with 50,000 things in it that nobody's read. Yeah, I think so. And Let isn't available closer. online. <laughs> right. We'll get to that in a moment. Oh, good. This apologizing for the criminal, the person who chooses to commit crimes to the detriment of our victims the people who don't choose to be victims, is absolutely incredible. Crime is up 38% year-to-date since 2019. Crime is up everywhere. We have seen an incredible increase of drugs that have been snuck into prison. We are on pace for a record year when it comes to drugs in prisons. Uh, that was legislator McClure. Uh, McClure asked Peters, the bill sponsor, if the bill also sought to change the word victims. McClure also asked what the term justice impacted individual meant. That means someone who has been impacted by the criminal justice system and is an individual, Peters said. Well, someone should have taken this Peters out behind the gym and just beat the crap out of him. Well, well yeah, I don't know if I'd advocate then you'd be that. A justice impacted right, then individual. you'd be, you'd be exactly yeah. what you're against. <laughs> The, I, I am looking right at House Committee Amendment Number 1, and it's the second sentence there. Amends the Illinois Crime Reduction Act of 2009, wow. changes references from offenders to justice-impacted individuals. See, it, this is actually happening. This is real. You can stop looking because apparently you couldn't find it. How do you spell Illinois? <laughs> you forgot the S. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. Illinois legislators get this. And Illinois, by the way, is in is in horrible financial condition. And we're modeling our state after being them. led as it is by ineffective and incompetent leftists. Illinois is in horrible financial straits. Uh, Illinois legislators are also pushing a bill that would change the crime known as armed habitual criminal to Persistent, unlawful possession of a weapon. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> they apparently believe people convicted of armed habitual criminal are getting bad reputations. What do you uh, think? Yeah. Well, they probably should. It really comes out of the reentry space, where space should be uh, foghorn. Okay. You space is used by Mysterians. You, I need space to work. You know, space. Hey, go. I got your space right, right here. here. It really comes out of the reentry space where people who don't live in this world as we do, as state legislators, see the title of the offense and think it means something much more nefarious than it really means. How could that be? 
How could that possibly be? It's nefarious to repeatedly be convicted of crimes. That's nefarious. And Kelly Cassidy, who's district, uh, she's a rep, or he, whose district includes Uptown, Edgewater, and Rogers Park. She is also a house sponsor of the bill that would reclassify offenders as justice-impaired individual. Hmm. I am uh, trying to find the story, Joe, but it's based out of Chicago. I cannot find it. But basically, there has been a rise of, I don't know, is the correct term vigilante justice? Yes, there's because, vigilantism. Okay, because there quite literally is not enough police to combat all of the various crimes that are going down. Residents are bis- basically taking it upon themselves to protect their own in their own neighborhoods. That's how bad Chicago has become. And Illinois as a whole, I guess. Uh, Sanibel sent me the version I just read. Here's Dale. Illinois lawmakers passed legislation to change the word offender to justice-impacted individual. Well, we just we certainly covered it. I'll See, part of, four, four. Huh, John? I was just going to say, part of the amendment, and this makes no sense to me, says uh, in a separate paragraph, for the purpose of this section, justice-impacted individual has the same meaning as offender in Section 5 of this Act. Well, A, it doesn't have the same meaning, and B, why? Why change it? House Bill 4409, which passed both houses, is part of a move to help parole-eligible prisoners find alternatives to jail. The new terminology is meant to reduce the stigma of being an offender. Well, then don't be an offender. Right. Yeah, you, are step day, you won't Plain have the stigma. Be step one. Republicans claim the Democrat authored bill removes accountability for people who commit crimes and creates a system that helps the criminal rather than the crime victims. Yes, because if you get into the mindset of the ridiculous Mysterian legislators, they view they view the crime as a result of oppression. And that, therefore, the oppressed must be cons- uh, must be given extra grace. The oppressed must be lifted up because they've been they've been oppressed right. by an evil system. Uh, the bill would change state documents to reflect the new justice impacted individual term in place of offender. It's being sent to Governor J. B. Pritzker for his signature. I'm sure he'll sign it. Oh yeah. He's another overweight Wimp. liberal Wimp. Gover- governor. <laughs> Your old mayor is. Uh, How you doing? Is just. Uh, what you gonna do? What astonished at the foolishness and the behavior of legislators, and you can see, as I say, the closer you get to the country's tallest buildings, although. Springfield, uh, Illinois, is not the size of Chicago or even Minneapolis, obviously, but it represents the state. It, it The same is going on the closer you get to the country's tallest buildings, as is happening and developing here. Yep. Mm-hmm. The uh, I don't know when people will wake up. I don't know when Hennepin County residents, for example, will wake up. I'm sure that the people of Illinois who have awakened, many of them uh, who are able, have moved. I know people who are waiting for certain dates to happen in their life before they can move. You know, they might not want to pull a kid out of school yet, that type of thing. Right. But uh, there's no future where Mysterians rule. Uh, that's a new aspect of the Mysterian movement that we haven't looked at. But they're ruining the future for young people. Mysterians are ruining the future of young people. And every once in a while, the local press, the Star Tribune, for example, will have an article expressing some kind of sympathy for how difficult it is, for example, for young people to own their first home. Well, why do you think that is? Oh, my God. Did you hear the response from KGP on that very subject, canceling student debt loan? The reason that she gave at the podium yesterday was we want these young people to be able to afford their first home. Well, no, you because lying she's, frauds. Right. And plus she's a Mysterian who would, who would buy into a program that would have the government pay for the first home. 100%. Yep. And so we're, there's no, the future has, is being ruined 
by Mysterians. Mm -hmm. The future in Minnesota is being ruined. What? Yes. <laughs> I, didn't I did find something about this bill now that we, we haven't said that perhaps should be added. Yeah. Uh, that move would only be for part of, it wouldn't be for every criminal. Let's put it that way. It'd be for the state's adult redeploy Illinois program. Did you say that already? Did I miss yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, so it's only for those individuals who are going from prison to rehab programs. Well, A, it doesn't change a thing I've said. It, it and B, no, it's, it's still only a matter be. of time before it applies to anyone, including a murderer. Yeah, it, it should because be. Because Mysterians are wrong. They're wrong-headed people. They don't like the way this country works. And because they themselves do not work or achieve or compete, they're trying to create a system in which those dynamics do not work. So they're ruining life for young people. I'm old enough probably to say, uh, I'll escape the worst of it. You guys won't. Mm. You guys won't. And particularly your kids won't. Right. Now, I've had this discussion many times with friends my age. Didn't we, we will say, well, didn't our fathers say the same thing back in the 50s? Didn't they say, well, the, these days, didn't sure. they say the same thing? And, and uh, you know, didn't they say, oh, this country's going to hell in a handbasket? Look at, no. look what Franklin Roosevelt is up to or whatever. On and on and on. And, and if they did say that, they were wrong. The country didn't go to hell. But I don't see how it's wrong to say right now that Mysterians are ruining the country for young people. I, I don't think that's an exaggeration. I don't, I don't think it's hyperbole. I don't either. No, I think it was at one time. It was probably natural for the old man to grouse. You and right? your rock music. Yeah, yeah, it was probably natural to grouse. But... If you go back 50, 60, 70 years, you weren't seeing the erosions of freedom that you're now seeing now. And by erosions of freedom, I guess in Minnesota, I would speak principally of financial freedom, that you have less of your money to lead your own life mm -hmm. because the Mysterians keep dreaming up programs that A, must be paid for, and B, are enabling people to not have to compete, work, or stand up for what we used to know as traditional American values. Right. So I have no, there's, I have no discomfort at all in saying that the same crowd that doesn't want, doesn't want to call a criminal, a criminal is the same crowd that is ruining life for young people. Mm. Isn't that a fine? How do you do? How do you do? 